So for now, we've got an issue with the low frequency settings. And as we go to times one, there we've got absolutely nothing. And we just have to now sort out what the issue is. Looking through the troubleshooting chart, which is table five in the service manual, one symptom listed here is no oscillation on X.1 and X.01 range, dial at one. And it says here, check A11Q8. Now, A11 board is in the oven and Q8 is a P-channel FET which is used as an impedance converter. And if we go to the schematic, Q8 is shown here. And this is all part of the integration assembly, even though Q8 is actually in the oven. This provides a high impedance so that the charging current charge and discharge current to generate the triangle waveform is uh, controlled by these two transistors it was generated by these two transistors and when you select the either the 0 0.1 times range or the, the 0.1 times range what happens is the current is dramatically reduced from the current source on those ranges the capacitors are actually reused from the one times and the ten times range. The current is reduced so the capacitors don't have to be huge to get the long time constants that are required on those ranges. So this FET here provides a high impedance input from the current source and obviously it's particularly if there's an issue with this FET the the current is much smaller than the normal current that's supplied for the other ranges and, and this is why i believe they've suggested that this FET should be checked and here is the FET just here so what i've done on the opposite side of the board is actually marked where where the drain gate and source connections are and as a reminder and so we'll just go and take take that device out here in the FET fixture on my Tech 577 curve tracer is the original p-channel FET uh, which was Q8 on board A11 which is the impedance converter for the triangle generator. Next to it is close equivalent, the 2N4360, which I had to do a bit of digging to find out that this was a suitable equivalent for, or a suitable replacement for this part. And so I thought I'll, I'll do a comparison test between the two. That sort of leads me on to another slight sidetrack here. I bought some of these uh, in case this was faulty and I thought, all right, I'll set the curve tracer up and test these new ones. And part of the way through testing, I was getting, started to get stupid results. I had beautiful curves to start with and then I just was getting rubbish and I thought oh no what's going on have I destroyed the component you know so I put another one in and then I was getting the same result and I thought oh no what's happened here so I went and did a bit of uh, checking of things and this particular fit test fixture was one that I bought well after I bought the curve tracer I bought this was off of eBay and on opening it up i found actually that some of the pins were corroded in it uh, so i gave it a good clean up and 
thought, well, that hopefully should fix it. Well, no, it didn't. And so I was wondering, have I... I, I was still wondering whether, have I damaged the, the FETs or is it something wrong with the curve tracer or whatever. So the next thing I did was I've got a similar one of these test fixtures but it does both some FETs and BJTs. Anyway, put that in and I was starting to get some sensible results again. So it was obvious that there was a problem here in this test fixture. And these have a board inside that actually plugs into the body. There's some banana uh, plugs on the bottom of the body and with small pins at the top, they plug into the circuit board. Well, what had happened was the source connection had broken free. So it was giving me totally erroneous results. So anyway, with that fixed, I found that all of the FETs that I'd tested, none of them were at, at fault, fortunately. So then I thought, all right, now's time to, to actually do a comparison between this FET, the new replacement, and the original. So here's a set of curves for the original FET, and we can see that the FETs was operational. If we go over to the new FET, the same gate steps, gate drive voltages, we get more output so obviously the gain is higher on the potential replacement FET, but I wouldn't have thought that that would necessarily cause the integrating circuit in the HP3300A not to function, but we shall see. Well, having replaced the P-channel FET, it appears now that the low frequency ranges are now working, which surprises me because there didn't appear to be anything wrong with the original FET on the curve tracer, except that its gain was possibly a bit low. But apart from that, it seemed to be okay. But with the new 2N4360 that had higher gain, we've got a working uh, low, pair of low frequency ranges. With the new FET installed and having run the unit for about 10-15 minutes and everything seeming to be normal, I switched it off, installed the board back in the oven here and replaced the cover and then promptly went and had some lunch. After coming back from lunch I switched the unit on again and we were back to the same problem. The 0.01 times and the 0.1 times ranges were back to not operating again. So I thought it has to be connections. In this case you're in a, an oven that is temperature cycling these wires over many years and there's, there's liable to be a failure occurring. So the next thing I did was I did a very weak pull test on all the wires here and actually found that this one, which I've unplugged here, pin 4 on the board, actually pulled away from the crimp and uh, was only the insulation holding it in place. Once I re-soldered that on and, and plugged it in again, everything worked once more. So I decided to put back the original uh, FET in here. Now the unit is back working once again. So it was really quite a simple fault, complicated by the fact that the HP manual actually suggested that Q8 may be the faulty component, or at least that it should be checked. Now I can finally wrap this up again and we'll be ready to start calibrating the unit. It's fairly straightforward to understand the mechanism of this fault. We've got a, a break in the circuit here and this oval here 
is around the current source for the low ranges, the 0.01 times and the 0.1 times. And this resistor network here is for the five ranges from 1 times to 10k times. Once this is broken here, there will be no current to drive the capacitors in the triangle wave generation circuit. This obviously leads to the symptom that the output only functions between the ranges of 1 times to 10k times. This, this break in the circuit exhibits the exact same symptom as the symptom that they're indicating that you should check the P-channel FET Q8 on the A11 card. The time interval plug-in used to do the waveform symmetry checks on the 3300A it was a recent eBay purchase. Many of my eBay purchases are vetted by she who must be obeyed. And if you don't know that reference, check out Rumpole of the Bailey. Well now we're measuring the symmetry of the waveform for the low two ranges. And currently I'm on the positive going half cycle. And if I just flip over here and we measure the negative going half cycle. And this will take a little while to capture the data and we're currently something of the order of certainly well below 0.2 percent so that particular measurement is fine next we'll go to the high range symmetry settings and see how that performs so we go to the hundred times frequency setting so that we can measure the symmetry there and uh, okay and if we measure the Just the next symmetry setting and get our angle adjusted. Let's just see what we were for. So four ninety seven. That seems to be pretty much the limit there. Okay, 498. If we go to 497, and that's definitely better than 1%. It's about probably point, again, about 0.2%. Maybe worst case about 0.2%. Certainly better than 1%. I'm just doing a quick frequency spot check and currently it's on 1 kilohertz and it's uh, pretty good. So all the other frequencies seem to come up reasonably well too. We're uh, just slightly high at 10 kilohertz and we go to 100 kilohertz 
and it's just very marginally high as well. After setting up the symmetry adjustments and the getting the dial calibration right for all the ranges, doing the final test here of distortion of one kilohertz sine wave from the HP double three double O A function generator, and we've got fundamental here at a thousand hertz. The signal level is 9.4 dBV and if we move the marker down to the second harmonic we move the marker to the second harmonic at 2 kilohertz we've got minus 43 44 dBV so we're about minus 53 54 dB away from the amplitude of the fundamental so this is definitely under the one percent specification if we go to three kilohertz th third harmonic yeah minus 57 so it's about minus 67 d db fourth harmonic four kilohertz minus 50 Two, three, zero. So, again, about minus 60 dB. So, we're cumulatively that will bring you to still under 1% distortion at 1 kilohertz, which is within spec. So, essentially, this function generator is now repaired and calibrated and ready to be used. So there you have it, there's the repair of my Hewlett Packard 3300A function generator and if you have any questions or comments please feel free to put them down in the comments below.